All right, so for those of you who didn't hear, my name is Bronwyn, or as my autocorrect would say, brown sauce. <laughs> Starting to feel a little rude and impersonal after all these years. Thought these phones were supposed to be smart. I love that when my Irish father and Zimbabwean mother were naming me, they were like, you know what? We don't think her life will be confusing enough. <laughs> Let's give her a Welsh name. <laughs> Keep her humble. I don't even mind being called brown sauce now. I'm a huge fan of HP brown sauce. Any other sauce heads in the audience? <laughs> Woo, all right, yeah! <laughs> okay, let me ask the sauce heads this, and you would be surprised how many people don't know this. Do you know what HP stands for? Okay. <laughs> yes, woman who said really aghast. <laughs> Give me a cheer if you knew that HP stood for Houses of Parliament. Woo. Give me a cheer if you did not. Woo. I am not the only dumbass on stage, right? No, I've been eating brown sauce since I came out of the womb, and I just learned that. There is a picture of Parliament on the bottle, people. <laughs> it was in that moment that I realized I can be very smart in certain areas of my life, but also very dumb. Right? Like, I am smart dumb as opposed to dumb smart. Do you know the difference? I'll tell you. Thank you for participating. Thank you for setting me up. She's like, no, please tell me what you mean. I'll tell you. I'll give you an example, right? Like, I was smart enough to skip a grade in school growing up, but I'm dumb enough to believe in astrology and crystals. Right? Like, I fully believe that the free stone that I got with my book on manifesting is going to change my life. Do we all know what manifesting is? Yeah, right? It's the adult version of writing a letter to Santa. <laughs> I manifested you all, so I think it's working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if anyone wants to know an example of someone who was dumb smart, these are people who use corporate acronyms without any irony, right? <laughs> they just want to circle back EOP to check those KPIs before their PTO to check their UTI. <laughs> is a sentence I said yesterday. <laughs> I am also dumb, dumb. I'm just dumb. <laughs> Tell a bit more about myself. When I'm bored, I like to plan my funeral. <laughs> you know what they say, always start your sets with your most relatable material. Does anyone else here have a funeral playlist? <laughs> nice, just one sad person in the room with me. Um, what's yours called? Do you have a name for it? No. Work on the name, it's so much fun. No, make it, mine's called Death Jams. Uh, available exclusively on Spotify. Please give it a follow. Right now, it's just me. It's very sad and ironically makes me want to kill myself. <laughs> uh, no, I, look, I've got a funeral playlist. Uh, I'm guessing if no one has a funeral playlist, you've also never written your own obituary for fun. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I've got a file on my desktop titled, Oh, bitch, <laughs> you wary. <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's a real good read. Um, but listen, I think the real reason I've got a funeral playlist is I come from a very big family. I never got to play my music growing up, and I feel like the afterlife would be my only chance to control the aux cable. <laughs> and I just really like the idea of forcing my family to listen to an emotionally confusing playlist <laughs> of my favorite songs for once. I want them to have to sit there and listen to the Gladiator theme song, <laughs> the movie, not the show, okay? Followed by Hakuna Matata. <laughs> In fact, I don't even think I get them to listen to songs I liked in life. Is my final joke. I want my family to have to sit there and try to cry to Mambo Number no. 5. <laughs> a song I really hated growing up, but I was always really jealous that my name wasn't listed in it. A little bit of Bronwyn in my life doesn't really work. And then I listened to it recently. Have you guys listened to it recently? Those lyrics are rapey as fuck. <laughs> I do not want to be a list like on that list, right? Lou Bega's women. It sounds like the fucking theme song to Epstein's Island. <laughs> I think the other song that I think would be really fun to play at my funeral would be the 1999 classic, The Thong Song. <laughs> Um, again, I've got to ask the audience this question because I did this joke in Tunbridge Wells <laughs> recently, and let me tell you, they do not know the thong song. <laughs> so give me an oh yeah, if you know the thong song. Oh, yeah. okay, beautiful harmonies. <laughs> give me an oh no, if you don't. Oh my god, oh shit. A lot of people don't know the thong song here either. Okay, um, it's not important that you know it, but actually tonight when you go home, you have got to watch the music video and listen to that song, okay? <laughs> you gotta watch the music video to get the full experience, okay? 1999 was a wild time. 
All you have to know about the thong song is that there was an American rapper by the name of Cisco who realized that the words thong and song rhymed <laughs> and a cultural phenomenon was born, right? I had no business buying a thong at the age of 13, okay? But I got one. And with it, my very first case of thrush. Okay. <laughs> it also has like really beautiful lyrics that have aged gorgeously. Um, at one point, Cisco does say she had dumps like a truck, truck, truck. Thighs like what? Okay, I thought we'd all sing along, but anyway, never mind. It's fine. What's wild is my full name is Bronwyn Cleona Sweeney. Uh, Bronwyn is Welsh for fair chested. <laughs> Thanks, mom and dad. Uh, uh, Cleona is Irish for pleasant, and Sweeney is Irish for shapely. So I believe the modern day translation of my name is, she had dumps like a truck, <laughs> truck, <laughs> truck. <laughs> um, comedy's not my full-time job. By day I work in advertising as a creative director. All right, thanks for the sad woos. Um, appropriate. I know, this is what successful businesswomen dress like now. Fuck heels. It's all about spending 200 pounds on a pair of trainers you can't even get wet. <laughs> I know I look less like a creative director and more like a camp counselor who teaches kids about consent through rap. <laughs> oh, fuck, yeah, I don't know. I wanna quit, I wanna quit my day job, but I can't, because I like earning money. Um, anyone who tells you that money cannot buy happiness has never lived in London and shared a house with eight other people, including Gary G, who used to label his eggs. And I don't know, it's like for someone who works in advertising, I should be immune to ads because I know all the tricks. I know what I'm being sold to, but I don't care. I buy a lot of stupid shit. Like, I don't know if any, has anyone else had like an ad follow them around the internet? Yeah, so I had one that followed me around last year to get a weighted blanket, and I got one. I've got really bad anxiety, so I got one in like the highest setting possible. It was like crushing. <laughs> but then an ad also convinced me to buy an electric blanket. And sandwiched between the two of them, it was, it was very emotionally confusing, <laughs> but also very erotic. <laughs> but the stupidest thing that an ad convinced me to buy was a 16-setting vibrator called the Clit Annihilator. <laughs> it's not actually called that. I just will not do their advertising for them for free, okay? Honestly. But I call this thing like the Clit Annihilator because technically it's not, a, it's not a vibrator. This thing should be classified as a power tool. <laughs> It's so powerful, my downstairs neighbor told me to stop vacuuming my flat so late at night. Sometimes very early in the morning. Sometimes on Teams calls, what can, on mute. What can I say? My flat is very dusty. But the ads of the clit annihilator promised me an orgasm as catastrophic and destructive as the eruption at Mount Vesuvius. And there would be no survivors. I thought that sounded delightful. I was like, yes, click, drag to basket. She will pay for next day delivery. Turns out my clit's a very simple woman who does not need 16 ways to be blasted off my body. Settings one to three would have been enough. But I felt the need to justify the purchase of this thing because I dropped like creative director money on this thing, right? I dropped a lot of money on this thing. So what I did is, uh, and you should take this away as like a treat for yourselves. Um, I had a date night for myself in the clit annihilator. And let me tell you, <laughs> you have not lived <laughs> until you've seduced yourself <laughs> by putting on some 90s R&B, not your funeral playlist, because that would be weird. You know, lighting some candles, preparing a nice post-orgasm charcuterie row board. That's charcuterie board for one. And then just totally gone to town on yourself with what can only be described as the Tesla of vibrators. Now, I'll end on this, which is that the clit annihilator did scare me the other night. Yes, I am still talking about my vibrator. <laughs> Gotta talk about what you know, right? Scared me the other night, because I went out and I had some drinks with some friends, so I came home feeling like kind of nice and tipsy, and I decided to go all the way with the clit annihilator. Yeah, woe is right. That is setting 16, okay? Now, when I hit 16, I might as well have hit a big red turbo button. <laughs> Because this thing sounded like it was trying to break the sound barrier. It was so powerful, it gave me heart palpitations. I thought I was having a heart attack and that I was going to die. And then I thought, what a way to go. Dead in my bed, the Clinton and I are still buzzing. This thing's got a great battery life. It's like an old Nokia. It will not die. 
My downstairs neighbor would wonder why I was vacuuming the flat for so long. <laughs> so she'd call emergency services, who'd have to like break into my flat, come into my bedroom, pull back the weighted blanket. <laughs> and I'd be in bed like Winnie the Pooh, tops on, bottoms off, belly out. <laughs> Hand in the honey pot. And then my poor sister at my funeral would have to walk up to the podium to the Macarena <laughs> and say some stupid shit like, well, at least she died doing what she loved. <laughs> I've been brown sauce. You've been awesome. Have a great night. Thank you.